I may be grumpy this episode. Turns out, Jake, I'm mad. I I went from ho hum to boiling mad. Yeah. In I in in just like one dude's tweet, um, made me boiling mad. I'm boiling mad right now. It'll fade because I can't be mad for that long. I might start slamming my head on the floor like my daughter does. No, don't do that, please. Don't show a video of your daughter slap slamming. Well, she her gets head. our she gets our attention. She sits down on the ground, looks at us, and go bram bram. Here's why I'm mad. What are two things I've been telling you? And here's why. We just did Fanatics Fest where we did like meet and greet for three days and talked to Yankees fans and chatted. And everyone, you think they can do it? You think they can do it? I'm like, yeah, I think they're good. I don't like they got the best record. They got a good team. I don't think anyone in the AL is leaps and bounds better than them, but they got some issues. And I been telling you, I'm telling everyone, I don't like how they play down the bad competition. And I don't like that they can't beat lefties. And they just have a 500 road trip against two teams that sold at the deadline. One of them, the worst team in the history of baseball, bottom two team in the history of baseball. Granted, they won that series, but they lose this series. So I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. Like Yanks got an easy schedule. Yeah, well, I don't know if that helps them. They're not amazing against bad teams. I think their winning percentage better against good teams. Maybe not. I don't know. And then they can't win against lefties, and that's irking me. And so that's making me mad. And then what boiled me over with rage was, because I haven't talked about this in a while because I kind of it was falling on such deaf ears that I shut up about it. They both hits in extra innings in game three are sinker ball pitchers pitching to lefties. Sinker ballers throw balls that tail away right so they're going to be on the outer side of the plate and they shift as if they're pitching inside to a lefty for him to pull and both times they hit it and and the volpe's not there and they've been doing this for two three years now and i've been screaming about it for two three years and i have like a personal beef with their defensive shift guy I haven't brought that to the airwaves, but you know this from uh, just talking to me. I think they're always in the wrong spot. So I'm now I'm boiling mad because stop pitching and shifting in silos. It's like those two coaches aren't talking to each other. They must just fight afterwards. Like, play's got to be mad at some point. I throw a sinker, dudes. Lefties don't pull it all the time. They don't hit to their normal pitchers. So that's why I'm boiling mad because that's been an issue for like two, three years. And one dude tweeted about it and it was like, you know, just reminded me that this is something they do. I don't like. And I was like, oh my God, yes, that was it. Dude, the defense is bad. Like I, I'm getting so frustrated with their internal metrics telling me they're good. Like they're bad. The infield defense besides Volpe. It was one of four is not good. Right. I mean, Glaber's defensively statistically the worst second baseman in the league this year. Uh, and then DJ is the only one that's a plus at third. It's a bummer. The logic of it. Clay's been banging that slider more, and that's kind of this more swing and miss pitch. Uh, but the fastball, especially to lefties, it feels like we've now seen an approach of going the other way with it. That like, is, is there any mid season revisiting like defensive positioning with Clay himself out there? Because I feel like that that has to be measured differently than other pitchers. Well, no, we, we always individualize it to the pitcher and the hitter. And you're trying to go to places where um, you're, you're limiting as much as you can get and beat. Now, Clay's one guy as much as anyone that in a perfect world lends itself to that five-man infield. A little harder to do now with – personnel and whatever, but, um, you know, we're, we're trying to cover up the holes where the ball has the best chance to go. So, and, and between Chappie and, and our defensive guys, we do a really good job of that. Um, we've been beat understandably with, with clay because 
he puts the ball on the ground. So more balls are going to get through than other guys, you know, in that kind of three, four holes really hurt us. Um, but just balls getting through period. Yeah. That's where I, I counter that. I don't know if it's bad luck and I don't know if it's on clay, just kind of a bad combination besides Volpe. The infield doesn't grade out well this year and the shifts have been not, you guys are middle of the pack in shifting and and you get beat and sometimes you get stopped you know uh the red Sox are really good right now the rays are awful so that's fun for us uh and they shift 80 percent of the at-bats so there you go but that's where i'm kind of coming to the conclusion and, and i we've been say, originally i would say about clay because he got a lot of comebackers but he's not great at fielding his own position i'm like that's a tough combination but now it it's expanded with the the corners being not great uh defensively this year and second base, we grade out the worst in the league. So, like, ground balls aren't the best recipe for the team. So, to have those being happening in those moments, it just seems like we're doomed for what you and baseball might consider bad luck. All right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say bad luck, more unfortunate. My point is he's been very consistent all year with what his stuff is, the contact he's generating. You know, and, you know, we got to help turn some more balls into outs, but, um, you know, we're right. not a perfect, okay. But I, we have the ability to beat anyone and we got to try our best to do that and put ourselves in the best situations to do that. I agree. I think, I think that every team that is of your, of the Yankees caliber has similar holes. So it's a pretty even field. That's why mm -hmm. it's a nice it's it's you don't get the luxury of trying things out because you got the division locked up or you got the wild card locked up because you're in a division race. But you also you want to be able to test and make any changes now before you get to the, the postseason. All of a sudden you're up against it and you got to do stuff now. So is that a tough balance as manager of in a race? What, you, what changes are you talking about? Changing how we shift for clay. No, I'm, we're, I'm in general. I mean, in, in I know where we get beat on clay, and we're trying to cover those things up. I thought it was uh, something you guys didn't do well in 2022. All of a sudden, we had three shortstops starting in the ALCS when you you could have ran multiple shortstops out in September to get people a little prep for that or find better footing there. So any situation that you run into the postseason, where all of a sudden you got to. I, I, my question is, if you had the luxury to do that, I think you would take it. But it's a tough balance now being in a division race, hunting wins, wanting to put your best foot forward, also wanting to test some things out. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully we're getting Jazz back, who's still new to third base. But, you know, you want to move him late in the game when all signs are indicating that he's going to be pretty dynamic over there. Yeah, but he's really good at second, and you get a better, better infielder at third, and then you get rid of the, some of the weaknesses. You know, there's how's the better second? He hasn't really played there much at all. In well, anyone's going to grade out better right now than Glaber at second. I mean, don't make me say that, but that's yeah. uh, you know that gets better if you put him over there. Although when we're talking about covering up holes in the infield, Glaber's range has not been an issue this year. No, no, it's not. It's it's his range, especially up the middle, has been really good this year. And, and, and his turn and throw has been very impressive. I agree with that. Peraza will get some reps before Jazz comes back up, like against lefties. You had said that earlier that, you know, uh, Peraza yeah, Peraza, will be, Peraza's in there tonight. Um, and that'll be at third base. Yep. Because we talked about maybe giving Volpe a spell, a rest. And then, and then you, you, you said you were considering it, but then Jazz got hurt. So I consider it when he, yeah, took the ball off the foot, but he's through that now. So. Um, and you know, I, I, the last, whatever, 10 days or so, you know, he's kind of been in that little bit of offensive funk that I feel like, you know, hopefully we look up in a couple of weeks and he's back in that groove where he was taken off again after he struggled there, at, you know, starting in June and July a little bit. Um, you know, I feel like he'll get there. Um, what's that, he, what's there on Vol Cause it, it's been, that's where I'm getting, I, I, he's great defensively, so that allows, you know, you yes. don't need him to be a juggernaut offensively. Great but he's been... If the you, most important spot. I know, like, I, agree, I agree. But if you roll his 
plate appearances by 50, you know, it, it never looks good. He had a good week, but it's, um, you know, the on base is, hasn't been over 300. And mm-hmm. so it just feels like it's odd with Volpe because you guys dug in real, real quickly last year to start saying, no, he's here all year, no matter what, where you see other rookies come up like Jackson holiday or uh, even judge in 16, where they, you know, go figure out what they need to work on and then go to like the shallow end where it's safer and work on it or minors. And, but he's just been in the deep end. But we haven't seen any change. And yeah, you guys he hasn't failed like guys you're talking about. He's he's still <laughs> come on, man. This guy's a this guy's a player. This guy's like you are you're you you're, you're, you're like, yeah, the defense is great. We acknowledge that. Like that's enormous. He's the best shortstop in the league. Like that's enormous. At that position. Defensively, he's hitting, yeah. He's hitting like a league average or below league average hitter. Like well below, yeah. Add it all up. He's a he's a winning player. Like stop it. Well, I you I mean I can say and, stop and, it back and, if and I want. Going, I disagree I disagree. I disagree with you. Two years old, like I know so has two good offensive weeks and he's a seven twenty OPS and the best defender in the league. Yeah. You got yourself a pretty damn good player right there. Yeah, and I he's th- get to there offensively. He's going to be a he's gonna get there. It's not it's not linear. It's not just shoot to the moon like he has defensively. Yeah, yes, but last year you guys said he's not getting he's not taking him out, and you ran him the whole year, and then he had a, a bad end of the year, and you and the we were told he got run to the ground and he was tired. That's that was what you said. He never played that much. Here he is. On a, a terrible last fifty game stretch with a three thirty two OPS, what's well, at plate appearances, not games. Um, but you roll it to 100, 150, 200. I mean, last two hundred uh, plate appearance, two forty one on base, five eighty two OPS. Like you're, and you were just running them out there again. It seems like we're we're kind of setting ourselves up. There, there was there's definitely a case in there where I could have given him a day here and there, absolutely. But to just have him not in the lineup. Next question. Seriously, when you run the team, you can make that call. Okay. 